Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the book on being a Christian by Hans Kuhn. We're going to take a look at uh, the continuation of part two. We're going to look at pages 68 to 78. It'll be on the reality of God as we continue into part two. Let's begin with block one and practical reason, not theoretical reason. Pure and practical reason, Immanuel Kant. For the existence of God, we appeal to practical reason manifested in man's actions. God then is posited by morality, which is unconditionally commanded. And it looks toward the transcendental inner self. God becomes great idea as a presupposition for moral praxis. Then practical positing is coupled with transcendental contemplation. This proof of God is called transcendental argument. Kunas, do we assume an unconditional moral obligation? God, as Ida's idea, unites morality and happiness. Our duty and inclination always in harmony, ask Hans Kuhn. Positing God always includes presuppositions, always. Therefore, practical positing and transcendental contemplation equal the always present presuppositions. God is understood by Kant as the condition of moral autonomy. But this means that we must start with the whole reality of the world, as concretely experienced, a real that is elucidated through practical reason. So we conclude block one with the real elucidated through practical reason. The self is summoned to responsible decision as a claim upon the self, a praxis reflection that opens up reality. An answer to be given in a systematic form, says Hans Kuhn. We begin with a preliminary notion of God, says Professor Kuhn. We begin with a preliminary notion of God. So we begin with this preliminary notion of God as uh, the great idea that we discover in the realm of actual praxis. And remember, praxis is action and reflection in a particular historical situation. That is the Greek definition. Praxis is action and reflection in a particular concrete historical situation. In that Praxis, reflection, and action dialectic. We begin with the preliminary notion of God as the idas idea of God. So with this idas idea that we have gained in block one, we begin with the theoretical idas idea. Now we go to block two and we take a look at the concrete, facing the real and the concrete. So block one, theoretical. Block two, practical. Block two, the hypothesis. The question of meaning equals the question, what may I hope? It's linked with concrete life. And it does enlist both meditative thought, meditative thought on the idas idea of God, and calculating thought of the reflective interaction with praxis ministry, praxis engagement with the concrete. In order to reach truth and meaning, man begins by accepting his own existence and his own reality. What may I hope is linked with the self's existence and reality. Reality is in principle meaningful. It is actualized value. Therefore, the self becomes, the self begins with a fundamental trust 
with a fundamental confidence, but coupled with the awareness that an uncertain reality does exist also. So block two, note three, our conclusion, posited hope and self-existence equals a dialectic of confidence and uncertainty. A dialectic of confidence and uncertainty. This is where the mysterion of God arises within the dialectic of the real and the unreal. The real of meaning and the unreal of surface uncertainty. We ask, what is the condition of possibility within this dialectic? The condition of possibility. This primary question must be answered. We must convincingly interpret human experience. We ask, what is the source of the real? What is the source of the meaning within the real? Suspended between being and not being. If God exists, he is the primal reason of all reality. So, conclusion. We move from Idas, idea of God, to God as primal reason of all reality. Block 2, note 5. God as primal reason of all reality. Because God exists, there is a hidden significance in all meaninglessness. There is hidden value. God is primal value of all that is. God is the being, the I am, of all that is. So from Idas idea, we move into discovering God as concrete being. God is theoretical idea. God is concrete being. This reality is threatened by fragmentation and worthlessness. So we've looked at the theoretical idea, Idas idea of God in block one. We examine the significance of the idea becoming concrete as the I am, as the being of all that is real, of all that has real depth of meaning. That brings us from the theoretical to the practical and now to the synthesis between the theoretical and the practical in block three. The dialectic of praxis attunement and outward uncertainty. <clears throat> and pay attention here because Professor Kuhn is very precise with his language. And he really does mean that to be praxis attunement. And we need to understand what he means by that. We are involved in a dialectic of discovering the being of God within a dialectic of praxis attunement and outward uncertainty. Reality and faith in God. The alternatives that we face are denial of God or affirmation of God. And then three, the one he accepts, acceptance of God founded on reality itself as faith in God. But there still remains scope and uh, possibility for human freedom. So scope for human freedom. Belief in God is a venture. It is a praxis venture. It has the character of ongoing decision. We must lay ourselves open. That's the way he terms it. We must lay ourselves open toward the truth by attuning the self intellectually, attuning the self emotionally, and acquiring truth that uh, is discovered in the midst of outward uncertainty. Therefore, conclusion to this lesson is going to be block three, note three. Faith in God and posited human free decision equals belief as a dialectic of attunement and uncertainty. Pay attention to this block three, note three. Acceptance of God implies a basic trust in reality. It lays the groundwork for our four primary questions. What can we know? What is the meaning of reality? What ought we to do? What may we hope? What may we hope? We recognize the unity of reality, of value over worthlessness, based on an ultimate assurance founded on concrete practical reason. Okay? Founded on not theoretical reason, but 
concrete, practical reason, where reality challenges us to accept it through active praxis, with hope in regard toward the future. Man knows through the venture of applying the self. There's your final axiom to this lesson. Man knows and man discovers God through the venture of applying the self, through the action of practical reason. Theoretical reason posits the idas idea of God, but practical concrete reason discovers the depth of being behind surface existence, the depth of being, the I am behind finitude, the transcendence, the realm of transcendence from the previous lesson. So very specific content here, but it's all about the realm of the real. And just so you'll be re reminded for uh, all dialectical theologians, the realm of the real is the realm of positing when the self is at that hinge moment between subjectivity and objectivity, and we posit the real, meaning we posit what we perceive as the form, and it is systematic, the form of kingdom of God. And we posit that after going through the meditative contemplation that attunes the self to the spirit. And then we go out and praxis ministry. And that is all taking place in the realm of the real, which this lesson addresses. It's that hinge point between subjectivity and objectivity, or what some people call internal externality. It's the worldview filter that you posit at the front of your mind through which you view all of the world. It's your worldview filter that is the realm of the real. And it's a realm of transcendence. So, excellent, excellent lesson. Block one gave us the theoretical first positing of the IDAS idea of God. It's a transcendental, contemplative positing of the IDAS idea of God that begins in transcendental contemplation, transcendental meditation. But then it must move on to practical positing. And to do so, it enters the concrete and begins with self-acceptance and the acceptance of reality. And it begins with the question, what may I hope for? How do I proceed from IDAS idea to something that can be concretely hoped for? So we begin with kind of a uh, anticipatory trust, a very fundamental trust and confidence knowing that behind uncertain reality, behind the surface finitude of certainty, uncertainty, lies a realm of transcendence that provides depth of meaning and constitutes the being, the I am, of all that is. Then we learned, after compiling, the theoretical posited IDAS idea of God. And then moving to the concrete practical reasoning in block two of anticipating and believing in and participating in the I am, the being, the depth of being behind all that is. Then we discover that we are involved in a dialectic of core attunement soul attunement and, and uh, outward uncertainty. We are engaging a praxis attunement, a tuned self. 
tuned intellectually, tuned emotionally, and by emotionally, in other words, tuned by that imprint of the heart, the motivational base of our being, and the intellectual truth that we have acquired. They come together as that praxis attunement that becomes the filter of our reflection in a concrete historical situation. Then we form our posited action in the realm of the real. And then we're ready to go out of the self and praxis action where we work out what we may hope for. It's a venture. It's an ongoing dynamic venture. And then we find what? Return moment. And what happens in return moment? It uh, is the discovery of truth, further truth. We know through the venture of applying the self, we discover more truth, what uh, is called that surplus of promise. We re-internalize that, and that imprints the heart, a Sophia motivational wisdom that will in turn imprint and influence the intellect, the gnosis wisdom, that will in turn affect and condition the praxis positing, the realm of the real. So it's a dialectic of attunement and outward uncertainty. And that's going to wrap up a brilliant lesson. I love this, these 10 pages, 68 to 78. And part two is really powerful. I'm really enjoying part two. We're going to pick up next time on page 79.